Welcome back to COM526 and a new unit again. Um, this time on text indexing. So we stay in the realm of strings and we stay in the realm of finding strings in longer strings, but this will be uh, a slightly different approach. Uh, I subtitled it with searching whole genomes because that will be one of the main applications where this is, this is in, in big use today. Uh, and since we just come out of this pandemic, or hopefully come out of this pandemic, you will all have done your PCR test at one or the other occasion, and very much oversimplifying. What's happening there is you take a sample of some RNA from your body. RNA is this short-lived cousin of DNA that coronaviruses are also made out of. Uh, it's amplified so that you can see them and then it's sequenced. So all of the occurrence, all of the occurring RNA is, is read off as a string. And then you try to find these strings in a database of known strings. And that's, um, well, the, the PCR tests use very specific snippets that are highly indicative of the specific coronavirus for COVID-19. Um, but the method is, is fairly general. You can use this for many other diagnoses. Uh, and what's behind it in many cases is trying to find a specific string snippet in a huge library of known strings, of known RNA molecules or known genes uh, from genomes um, or finding a certain part in the human genome to know what it's doing. Uh, and this is, this is very much uh, the basic level of, of what's behind this is what we'll cover in this unit. I hope this makes it a little uh, more relatable to you. Uh, when I did this last time, um, this was even more acute, but uh, you'll still see the one, one or odd PCR test done at the time, once, one or, the, one or twice. Of course, we didn't cover this yesterday. <laughs> what do we want to achieve in this unit? I'd like you to take away from it um, a few notions that can be used to pre-process a large collection of text that doesn't change all the time, so we treat the text as static, um, so that we can work with the text, and specifically our inverted indices and suffix trees and the modern versions of that. Uh, I want you to know what this generalized suffix tree is. Well, we'll cover that um, uh, on Thursday, probably. Uh, again, as usual, it's not just about what is in principle doable, but how fast can we do it? That will make a major difference if you're working with gigabytes and more of data. Um, and I'd like you to be able to design simple algorithms based on a suffix tree where, they, where you use what the suffix tree can give you. Uh, this will not make much sense at this stage where you don't know what these are, but um, we'll come to that. And same uh, for the construction algorithms of these. There's a whole bunch of sections because I tried to break this up into many small parts as opposed to having two big sections. Uh, I would say this is my favorite unit because it shows some really elegant and nice results where some really famous people thought they're impossible. And I'll show you towards the end of the module all the details of how to do it. So it brings you quite close to the cutting edge of research, but every individual step is really quite fundamental and elementary to understand. It's just, just in quotes, that putting all those steps together builds something really fancy and complicated. I think it's a, a really beautiful topic, so I hope you can enjoy it a bit. Um, it is a bit longer a unit than the other uh, ones, so it will probably keep us, keep us busy for this and next week. Okay, let's have a look at what we're doing here, more formally than in the introduction. We'll look at what's called the text indexing problem, where uh, we again try to find occurrences of a pattern in a text, but the game is, is different. The text is fixed this time around, so we get the text ahead of time, and well, I'll, I'll show, walk you through the examples down here in a second what the text can, can be, but it's um, 
an abstract problem that's quite versatile. And we can pre-process this text. So we can spend some time on the text and make subsequent searches fast. And the idea is that we expect many queries for different patterns. So this should be offset by uh, the, the time we spend on looking at the text should be offset by those many searches. Uh, and if you want, string matching, as we've looked at it in, in the previous two units, is more of an algorithm where you're given the input, you do it, and then you forget everything. And in this unit, we take more of the data structures classes, the data structures lens, uh, where you build the index of the text and you keep that around, and then you do queries on the data structure. Where would you find something that is um, text indexing at the bottom of it? Web search engines, in the simplest way, are like that. They do lots of other things these days. Uh, but when Google started, one of the basic functionalities was I type in a certain string, and it finds all the websites where, where that occurs. And uh, other sorts of search engines or, or inverted indices, well, we'll come to that in more detail. They still work pretty much like this. Uh, dictionaries, in the classical sense of looking up words in a different language, they're pretty much static, but uh, often you don't want to just find the, the keywords, but maybe also where this is used, and then you easily get to something like text indexing. Uh, Wikipedia is the same. I think the, the search function of Wikipedia is notoriously bad. <laughs> I don't know if what you, what you feel, uh, but um, it, it could sometimes could sometimes work better. It often doesn't find occurrences in the text really well. It's basically looking at the titles mostly. Uh, then slightly more esoteric, but I hinted at this. If, if you're working in bioinformatics, then you have these huge collections of known biological sequences. Uh, and the standard application there would be you take a sample somewhere from some uh, deep sea area, you bring this up, and then you try to find what has lived there. And a way to do it is sequence these little uh, remainders of life that you have in your test tube, and then search these little snippets in a big database of known DNA. And that way you can often, with uh, high accuracy, identify what kind of creatures live there. And you can do all sorts of analysis based off that. Uh, and lastly, whenever you have text documents, any, any collection, that doesn't grow too fast can be seen as, as a text indexing task. I want to look first at a very a conceptually very simple solution that is highly effective in some applications and is often the end of the story if you see text indexing in undergrad classes. So first of all, where does the word actually come from? Um, it's, uh, it's something you find in books. So an inverted index is like the index in a book where you have a list of keywords and it shows you where they occur in a book. And the same can be done in a sense for a whole text. So um, this often works well for natural language text. The big assumption that's behind this is that we only ever search for given keywords. So if you try to search for some word that occurs in a given book that you have, but it's not included in the index because the author thought it's not really relevant, you won't find it. Or a book won't list all the occurrences of and in the book, uh, just because people assume this is not interesting. So an inverted index um, in, in computer science is slightly extended from that um, restricted list because we, have, we can afford to have a little more space. You just take all the words that occur in the text. Um, so can be just take the text and split it at white space. Uh, but often it involves some knowledge of the natural language that's used. So you often reduce words to their stem. Uh, but then at the end of the day, what it is, is a big map or a dictionary from, that maps from words to where they occur. Um, and so I wanted to point out, so this is just a dictionary. Or one, one way to implement it would be a dictionary that maps from 
from strings to lists of integers. So the keys are the words that occur in the text and the values is uh, the list of, of starting indices, say, of occurrences. And you've seen data structures how to do this. Uh, any suggestions? How would you do it if I give you a text file and you want to store an inverted index? Well, you could download Apache Lucene. It's a, a library to properly do it. A simple way would be just a binary search tree. Right? It's, it's a dictionary. The keys can be compared. So you could just have a binary search tree. Uh, the problem here is that it, it needs at least let me write omega log n. It needs at least log n time to find something in this dictionary. And n is now the number of words, which could go, we could, could grow quite large. And this is even disregarding the fact that the comparison takes time. We're comparing strings and not just single characters. So it's just um, not quite as fast as we would like it. It would work, but remember n could be something like all of the internet for a web search engine or all of Wikipedia, it wouldn't be great if whenever you type something, you had to wait some time that depends on the size of the data set. It's just not good enough in this application. What we really want is something that depends on the pattern that you search, because that's inevitable, but nothing else. All right because we're running a little short. Um, let me maybe finish after this one. So what's a try? Okay, I can wait a few more seconds, but it seems like we should spend some time on tries, right? Uh, in this case, let me not rush this last part, but I, I don't want to leave you with the cliffhanger. So I'll just tell, tell you what a try is and we'll look at it properly next time. Uh, a try is a tree data structure that stores strings as keys. So it can be used for a dictionary but specifically for the case that the keys are strings. Uh, and it has some, some very useful features for this specific case. Uh, the term is a little, is a terrible name. Uh, it, it sounds like try, so if, well, if you put a, the plural, then tries as the pronunciation makes a little more sense. The rumor has it that it comes from retrieval. And so, you should say tree, but tree is already taken. So we say try. I never really got this one, uh, but it's um, common use. So I, I guess we'll just stick with it. Um, let's just look at the example here. Uh, the, what a try does is it stores the keys, the strings that are stored as the labels on the root to leaf path. So if you take this path, leading to this string. Then you see if you read from the root a, b, a, a, b, and then this weird dollar sign, that's exactly what's in the leaf. So if a try stores a certain string, it will make sure that the path from the root to where the string is stored reads exactly as the string itself. And why is that a good idea? It means that, for example, all the strings that start with a, b can be found as the sub in the subtree of this node. They're all grouped by prefixes. And so this can be used for searching. If I wanted to know, does this try contain a string 
I just start traversing at the root and follow down. And if I get stuck, it doesn't contain it. And if I find it, I found it. Okay, so search becomes quite simple. Um, and well, we'll we'll discuss the uh, the nitpicks here next time. We can also think about whether this already is good or not. And spoiler, the answer is not quite yet. But yeah, let's let's not rush this one because most of you haven't seen this before.